Today, tomorrow, together. Leidenberg, a bustling town bristling with new developments and opportunity, is nestled at the foothills of the famous or infamous Long Tom Pass and surrounded by the Steenkampsberg and Marksberg mountain ranges, the highest points in Mpumalanga. Duck climate is typical of the region with cool nights and warm days and its central location, just a short hop of 300 kilometers from Pretoria, makes it an ideal stopover to explore the Panorama Route and the Kruger National Park. However, South Africa's top off-roaders were in Leidenberg for another reason. No, sir, not sightseeing for them. It was the 2008 Toyota Dealer 400, the seventh and penultimate round of the ABSA Off-Road Championship, touted to be more spectator-friendly than ever before, while teams were guaranteed to be impressed with a route layout that boasts new roads, 50% of which they'd never driven before. Off-road enthusiasts and teams were assured that these new sections would entertain and also highlight the tight racing that has been a hallmark of the 08 season. The route had a few nice surprises and ups and downs in store for the drivers and their faithful navigators. And it included some uncompromising terrain and very dry testing countryside. The competitiveness, particularly in the SP Class and A category in 2008, has been nothing short of scintillating. And in both championship battles, the fans expected a few clashes of epic proportions. In fact, most of the championship contenders were well aware that this was make or break in Leidenberg. There were only six points that separated the top three drivers in the SP class standings. The dices were rolling and no one knew exactly how they were destined to fall. The reigning champion Duncan Foss and the fire engine red Sassel Nissan Navara led the drivers' championship by a slender four points. That was ahead of former champion Neil Woolridge in the factory Ford Racing Ranger. In the Toyota camp, they too were loaded and ready to fire at the opposition. Mark Grenier was particularly eager to win this one, his sponsor's flagship event. Oh, absolutely. Um, it's been one of my, my big uh, ambitions to, to do it for these guys. Um, we have uh, big supporters up here, and I'd really like to bring a result home for them. You've had a few waltzes with Lady Luck this season. Yeah, we've had gremlins here and there, but um, we're sorting them out as we go along, and um, we're slowly making some, some strong progress. I mean, the vehicle has definitely got the pace. It's just a matter of getting, uh, getting all the little bits and small pieces uh, sorted out, and we'll, we'll be there. What are you expecting route-wise here in Leidenberg? Well, I think definitely it's going to be some really quick stuff, and uh, in between it's going to be some really tough stuff. So it's going to be difficult to find the balance, and also being so long, it's going to be tricky, but um, we're going to give it hell. Championship leader and defending national champion, Duncan Foss. Yeah, you know, always at this race, uh, it's always a critical time in the championship. There's one more race after this, and uh, the points are very close between Hannes, myself, and the Fords. So all of us actually need, one of us has to win to, to really try and cement our position. So we're all going to be trying hard, I'm sure. And what sort of conditions are you expecting in the Mpumalanga Portion Mountains? Look, there's been no rain in the area, so it's going to be very dusty. Um, luckily, there's a bit of wind around, so that, that should help us. But uh, it's always tough this race. You know, there are a lot of uh, mountainous areas, a lot of rocks that can catch you out, a lot of boulders. So you, you've got to be fast, but you've got to be clever as well. And there's the rub. Short Hummer, Woolridge's co-driver, knows it as a tough ride. Yeah, it is, but we need to finish it first of all. Um, obviously, we, we, we need a win. Uh, but, you know, the championship's alive and uh, it's never over till it's over. We need to be in front at the end of the season, not at the beginning. And, uh, now the car's good. We're looking forward to the race. It's a great race. So we've had a bit of bad luck over the years here. Um, there were small little problems, but uh, we're looking forward to it. Now, you and Neil have been at this for so long. Do you still feel the pressure? Uh, obviously, there's a little bit of pressure, but I don't think it's pressure as in that we're nervous or anything like that. We're just going to go out and do our job and uh, attack these guys and uh, let's see what happens. In Class D, it would also be full steam ahead and don't spare the horses. Yes, no, definitely, you know, uh, the championship is not over till it's over. Uh, Henry has got a healthy lead of 15 points on us. So uh, we'll have to, to give everything. You know, but the main thing is we've got to enjoy it uh, while giving everything, you know, and hope for the best. You've been coming here for a long time. What do you think of the conditions? Well, you know, Leidenberg is typical. One of the things that you get from very rough 
to very fast smooth sections you know you get a very very good mixture of everything there the route is traditionally very well marked and uh, it's quite an enjoyable route you know the mountains are a little bit rough there but then uh, down here you get some like a fast sweeping sessions which uh, sections which you can enjoy in class e dierwald van breda was second but in his first season in the big league did he expect to be competitive so soon no not really i think we were very conservative and at the beginning of the year we had a lot of technical hassles that we had to sort out but what we're trying to do is to have a stable race and uh, have a solid go for it uh, not to try to win but finish every race uh, consistent and uh, concluding everyone with a good result the podium if possible so that'll be your tactic for this race as well yes i'm uh, going to be conservative not attacking too much and uh, then trying to keep the bucky uh, on his wheels in the special vehicle class, two fine mid-season wins in the long and arduous Toyota 1000 Desert Race and the next race, the Sun City 400, followed by a consolidating second in the Lepopo 400. The total porter pair of former champion Shamir Varyawa and Siegfried Rousseau had taken the lead, but it was only by five points. We wanted to know whether driving with a lead changes the attitude in the car. Yes, definitely. You know, we've um, uh, had a plan for the whole year. You, uh, we've won two races. Um, at the moment we're leading the championship in points we're five points ahead of, of Schuwald so we need to keep our edge you know it's not um, that in important to win but it would be would be lucky to win you know but um, it's more important for us at the moment to win the championship so we are, do have a strategy that we're going to try and follow early pace at as Kali and Gundan Solvald started off with a second in Darling and then a win in the Eastern Cape but it had all come down to Leidenberg this is definitely make or break what they say in cricket is six or a nix, I suppose. So it's very important. Uh, we're going to try and see if we can maybe take the bull by the horns this time. The car's prepped very well. We're not no problems at this stage with the car. If there is not uh, any small hassles, I believe we'll be able to go well this way. Is there any pressure for you in the situation, or is it on Shamir? I think the pressure is a little bit off. Uh, it's our first year, it's Quinton's first year actually, and uh, to lead the championship up till the sixth event of the year, that was something that we didn't expect, but it was, it was much appreciated. So I think the, the pressure is a little bit off now, uh, and now we can do what we're supposed to do, and that is to have fun. Another innovative idea which the organizers presented in Leidenberg was that the 75km prologue on the Friday to determine start positions for the race proper would not form a part of the main route. It started 6 kilometers from the host's Leidenberg Toyota on the Dolstrom Road, and the early going was fast. Krobler and Moore could ill afford another non-finish, like they did at their own event, the Nissan Sugar Belt 400. Most of the championship contenders and their crews still had to drop one result from their season points total. The four-time champ needed every single one available. Krobler, though, had a huge dice on his hands, passing the time checks in exactly the same time Christopher and Yavi Bardnost in their Castor Toyota were mashing down the accelerator. Their stablemates, Anthony Taylor and Robin Houghton, also got in on the act and were just three seconds off the pace. aggressive and controlled driving from the former national production car champion. And making it three in the top four for Toyota, Grenier and his steady as rock navigator Chris Birkin were only 36 seconds behind Hobler's Nissan at the time check. But this was the last scene that the Nissan crew wanted to see. Voss stranded at the roadside, while the Micker and XL dealer team and all the other championship contenders stormed right past. What can I say? We lost four-wheel drive after about two k's an hour. The light we checked on the start line, it was working, and now it's not working, so it's going from bad to worse. A bad day at the office, but not so for the Ford Ranger pilot, Woolridge and his trusty co Shorthammer. The Peter Maritzburg based duo was steady and fast, promising good things for the race proper the next day. In the co-drivers championship battle, it was also very tight. Kenny led Nissan's Juan Moore alongside the crafty Krobler by a scant two points, and the race was on here too. Kubis van Donde and Rian Gropa and the second forward were sixth fastest, 
two minutes and 35 seconds behind. The muddy sections early on were taxing on car, mind and left foot. The clutch was working overtime. Mark Ferguson and Craig West made it three in the top seven for Ford in their Ranger. The manufacturer's battle was hotting up with Toyota setting the pace and Nissan 40 points in arrears. In Class D, it was indeed Labuskachny and his co-driver Johan Gerber who appeared first in the race on Nissan. They had thrown caution to the wind early on and were driving hard. But the experienced brothers Henry and Maurice Amatton in their red Ryobi Nissan hardbody with their 15-point championship cushion were right behind them. In fact, they were just a second behind at the time check. It was all-out stuff. They were followed by Yaku Swanepoel and Keith Solomon in the IDM cement entry. They've had a solid and steady season but wanted to do some giant killing in Leidenberg. The big names in Class E then came by. Defending national champions Jack Peckham and Lucia Santoro in their diesel Ford Ranger had taken it out hard and were ahead by 1 minute and 50 seconds. With husband and wife team Jordan Sharon Barkhausen and the Roa Contiota next in the SP Class 9th quickest in the prologue. And back in Class E, Limpopo 400 winners Dion Fenta and Ian Farmer who were chasing Peckham's dust in their 4x4 Mega World entry. With third in Class D going to Christian Deploy and Henk Janse van Vieren in the RFS Toyota. Almost four minutes off the pace, sent by Labaskachny and then Zermatt. And in the team Barberspan Toyota Hilux entered in Class E, it was Yanni Fisser and Jox Leroux who were third by 90 seconds. But it was Krobler and Moore who had set the fastest time. However, it was close, very close. Just three seconds covered the first three. With the surprise package, Fissa and Bardenost upstaging the big-name favourites a little. To the stopwatch battle in the specials now, and Colin Matthews and Alan Smith in the multicoloured century racing bat had cracked three consecutive finishes and subsequently settled down as a combination. They were up by 40 seconds. And it would have been more if they'd only checked the timetable for the train. A fine victory for Gary Bertolt and his navigator Andre Vermeulen in the big turquoise Atlas Copco Porter. Their second of the season on the Limpopo 400 has brought them straight back into the picture and the prologue proved that it was no fluke. Reigning national champ Evan Hutchinson and Achim Bergman in the motorite bat were third quickest at this point. Just 80 seconds behind, they were pushing hard. The Solwats had the back spec 4 finely tuned and set up and the tall German driver was letting out the reins on the tough 75 kilometer prologue. Like he said, everything to gain right here. But there was no sign of Variawa yet. However, Don Blakey and standing co-driver Gary Campbell in their Zarko Light were leading Class P and building on a 90 second lead. The second Atlas Copco in the hands of Gary Gillingham and VZ van Zale was fifth early on and maintained a punishing pace. But the bat kept it up. Second in Class B was filled by brothers Johan and Etienne Besaidnote in there and then co bat. They were loving the rough and tumble of Umpumalanga. And in Class B, it was Hendrik Krey and Tito Fuhr who were setting the pace for the B class entries. They clocked 66 minutes and 19 seconds in the Keymax property bat. Back in Class P, it was Johan van Staden and James Rousseau who had taken a liking to second place and held on to it for dear life. Fifth in the A-Class battle were 2007 championship runners-up Nick Harper and his son Ryan. But their prologue almost came to naught right here. Well handled in the end. They needed a finish desperately in Leidenberg. In Class B, the second place was filled by Lowe de Brain and Rudy Britz, who were just 57 seconds behind in the Ruacon bat. A great drive. And third in this class, it was Mark de Chalain and Peter de Witt. 
they have the Staffix Racing Viper going well. Just more than two minutes done, but steady and safe. But it was a win by non-championship contenders Matthews and Smith. And should it continue on race day, it would make it very difficult for the front runners to recover vitally needed points. Less than two minutes between the top four right there, though. Then there's repairs and resetting to be done for the 400 k's of racing the next day. And in the pit area at the Leidenberg Rugby Club, the feverish activity continued at a pace. Every little thing has to be triple checked to ensure reliability and performance, all within just a few short hours. Yeah, it, uh, it was quite a good event, uh, prologue for me. First time I've been here also, so I didn't go too hard. Um, just try to get the car to the end. Um, Mark had a flat wheel, unfortunately, about 15 k's from the end, and uh, I got caught in his dust, so I must have lost about 20 or 30 seconds from that. But until then, uh, I think we were running a first and second. And then uh, at the end, I think I'm about six seconds behind Hannes now. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's left it open for, for tomorrow. Let's hope we can have a good clean run tomorrow. Grobler was equally happy with his day in the Nissan Navarra's cockpit. Yeah, it was a good result. Uh, it was uh, really rough out there. Um, we had a fast piece in the beginning and then it went rough and uh, we passed quite a few guys. Uh, we had a, it was really tricky. There was a lot of instructions on top of each other and uh, we went wrong two times or three times and uh, we lost a little bit of time there. And then we call, caught one of the sand masters that had problems in ahead of us and uh, we lost probably another 30 seconds there. But uh, we were lucky also that we uh, made it and we've got a one second lead. Uh, one second lead to one second lead and tomorrow I think uh, if you're leading uh, it's very dry out here and if you're not going to have dust it's maybe going to have, have an advantage. The only thing is that you'll have to stay out of trouble and not having a puncture. Ford 2 were smiling but they had fan troubles but it's not what you think. No, we had a good day at the office. It started off very well, and the uh, first 20 k's or 30 k's we were really pushing hard and everything was good. And then suddenly I saw the temperature on the car started to go up a little bit and uh, didn't get too high, but it went higher than it normally does, so it kind of like took my eye off the ball for a while. Uh, we found out afterwards it was one of the fans that actually wasn't switched on. One of the trip switches wasn't in, so that's why it was running a little bit hot. So no major problems with that, but uh, overall we had, a, we had a fair time trial. We, we flipped on the road tomorrow morning, not too far behind on time which is okay, but we also made a couple of mistakes today. We wrong slotted on two, two, two or three occasions, which cost us a couple of seconds. But overall, we're very happy. The car's strong, it's really, really good. And uh, Duncan, who's our main competition, he's in the Nissan. He's, I don't know, he's not in the results yet, so he's obviously had a problem, which is not nice to gloat about other people, but it's good that he's behind us. So, so Hannes is our main problem, and the other Nissan, we've got to watch him tomorrow, because he's starting off first. So, uh, but in saying that, it's a long day tomorrow. Looks like it's going to be hot and dry and dusty. Hope the wind keeps up. And, uh, yeah, push hard tomorrow and enjoy it. A diplomat to the end. Matthews and Smith had put away some really big names and had thoroughly enjoyed their 75-kilometer sprint through the undergrowth, mud, and dust of Leidenberg. It's a very, very tight, very technical, very rough route. You, you couldn't once just, uh, you know, sit back. It was always going to catch you out. Um, we will be very happy with the result. It's our, our first time to win a prologue, so we, we over the moon. And Evan Hutchinson in the motor right back was also doing some space travel. Yeah, we had a very good run. I think the uh, first thing that went in our favour was we drew our starting positions out of the hat um, this morning. So we traditionally have been starting first and second on a time trial, um, which is quite difficult. Uh, whereas today we drew fourth, so it worked in our favour. Yeah, we had a great run. I think we were about a minute and a half ahead of the field and we picked up a punch, unfortunately, so that uh, we needed to change it stopped us back slightly. But, um, yeah, a very good run, nonetheless. Vehicle and asset finance from ABSA. Going the extra mile to get you...